Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your video lesson introduction unit on prime versus composite. In this lesson, your learning targets are that I can determine if a number is prime or composite, and I can identify properties of prime and composite numbers. So have your notes ready, write down your learning target, and away we go. So here are some vocabulary words for you whenever you see this vocabulary symbol. That generally means that these are important words that you want. And sometimes when you see a question, there's going to be this little question guy thinking, this is when you want to stop and think about the prior knowledge you have um, before just being told what you know. Okay? So stop and think right now. This would be a good place to pause. What do you know about prime and composite numbers? So then we'll talk about prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that have only two factors. And my writing's a little sketchy with this new pen. With only two factors, which are one and itself. I'm just going to use my finger instead of the pen. So bear with that writing there. It's going to be a tricky one. Composite numbers. Composite numbers are whole numbers with factors other than one and itself. So for example, a composite number would be a number like four. Four has factors of one and four or two times two. So it really only has three number factors, so that's more than just the two, one, and four. Whereas a prime number example would be three, because its only factors are one and three. So just the two factors. Divisible. When you hear divisible, divisible means that a number can be divided evenly. And again, your handwriting should look way better than mine. I lost my pen. I need to find a new one. Okay, so the number can be divided evenly. So for example, I might say a number is divisible by 2. That means 2 can go in there without any left over. If a number is divisible by 3, that means 3 can go into that number a couple times um, or one time without any left over. Factors then. Factors are numbers that make up another number. So they're numbers that you can multiply together to make a number. So for example, if I said 50, which is kind of a bigger number, I know that I could do 1 times 50. I could do 2 times 25. I could do 5 times 10. And so those numbers, that 1, 50, 2, 25, 5, and 10, are all factors of 50. Okay, so they're numbers that you can divide that number by or numbers that multiply together to get to that number. So how can we tell if a number is prime? Okay, hmm. How do we tell if a number is prime? Well, we have to know what the word prime means. So again, we're looking for only has factors. So the only numbers you can divide it by are one and the number itself. So you wanna look for that. So if I put the number four out again, I know that that number can be 1 and 4, but that number can also be 2 and 2. So I notice that it has more than just the two factors of 1 and 4, so that number is not prime. Whereas if I were to try the number 7, I know the factors of 7 are 1 times 7. And 7, again, I only get 1 times 7, so 1 and 7 are its only factors, so 7 is a prime number. So you can make that factor tree and list out the factors of the number. The lower ones are a little easy for us, but when we get a little higher up in the numbers, it's a little trickier to tell. So for example, if I had 53, well, I could break that up. I know this is the same as 50 plus 3. Well, this is divisible, but this isn't, so I'm always going to have that left over. 53 is only factors when multiplied are 53 and 1. So that is a prime number. So it takes some like guessing and checking on a few of them. You have to be patient with yourself and the process. So how do we tell if a number is composite? Okay, so again, we're looking for its factors. So a composite number is going to have more than two factors. 
So it's going to have more than just one in itself. So when I look at the number 2, I realize that's 1 times 2. There's nothing else. So that number is prime. It's not composite. 2 is actually the only even number that will be prime because any other even number 2 can go into. So that's a little fun fact for you. So if I try the number 6, well, 6 can be 1 and 6, but 6 can also be 2 times 3. So I notice that I have 4 total factors, so that's a composite number. Say I try 56. 56 I know can be broken into, well, 1 and 56, as usual. We always know that. But 56 is 7 times 8, and 8 can be broken up into 2 and 4. So I notice that those factors are 1, 56, 7, 8, and 8 can be broken up into 2 and 4 also. So I know that 2 and 4 then must be able to be multiplied to get to there as well. So there's more factors than that even if we were to branch that out. So think about more than two factors. Anything that can go into the number other than just one in itself is going to be composite. Question though, what about the numbers 1 and 0? If you think about the number 0, if you have nothing, if I have something and I want to split it into 2, say I went, oh, 0 divided by 2. Well, if I have nothing and I split into two things, I still have nothing. So 0 can't be, I mean, we can divide it by anything, but we're always going to end up with 0. And so 1 times 0 is just 0 um, and any number. So this is actually a neither. This is neither prime nor composite. And 1 One's only factors are actually just one, so it doesn't even have another number. This is also a neither. So those are special cases. One and zero are neither prime nor composite. All right, so now you try. So we're going to look here at identifying all of the factors of the whole numbers listed below. Tell if the numbers is prime or composite. Okay, so you would just want to give those a try. So 13, again, you could try what numbers multiply to 13. So we're not doing adding. 6 plus 7 is 13, but that's not a factor. It's not something that multiplies there. So I think it's only 1 times 13. I can't think of any other factors, so that's prime. You can pause here again and try on your own and not just get all the answers from me. 32. I see that it's even. It's a larger even number than 2, so right away I think that's composite, and I can give it a try dividing by 2. That's 2 times 16, or it could be 4 times 8. So it has more than just the factors of 1 and 32, so that's composite. Notice how I talk through things. It's important to be able to explain your thinking. 19, thinking of factors, I know 1 and 19. It's not even, so it's not divisible by 2. It's not divisible by 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then um, it's too small to be divisible by 10 because it's not 20. So this one is also prime. 44, again, I see that's even, so it is divisible by 2. So we have factors of 1 and 44, 2 and 22, and there's more factors, um, 4 and 11. But right now, I already know that it's composite. Your notes should look way better than mine and nice and neat. 30 then. 30 again I can see is 1 times 30. It ends in a 0, so I know it's divisible by uh, both 10 and 2. So it would be 2 times 15 as well as 3 times 10 is the same as 30. So therefore, that is a composite number. So the summary of this lesson is how can you tell if numbers are prime or composite? And that comes down to what? Think about how do you know? It all comes down to checking the factors of the number. So we need to work on our multiplication and our division skills. The ones to look out for, a helpful hint, are ones like um, using your prime numbers as factors. So like say 13 times 3 equals 39, and a lot of times people see that and might think it's prime because it ends in a 9, but that's divisible by both 3 and 13. 
Um, another one, 51, so third, not 13 times that, 51 is divisible by 3, and a lot of times people don't think that. So always use your skills of knowing, like, well, 60 is divisible by 3, and 51 minus, 60 minus 51 is 9, which is also divisible by 3. So this one also has to be divisible by 3. So kind of using some strategies that we can talk about in class, um, but do your best to know your factors and have a multiplication chart ready. So end your video. Anytime you end a video, don't forget, for better understanding, you can rewatch the whole video or parts of the video. You could always look for other examples that are in a textbook or online. You could do personal tutor videos from the textbook um, or Khan Academy, whatever else is best for you. Make sure that you do what's best for your learning. Good luck.